Hello, all of you beautiful law school students. It's me, Leslie Javinikar, at the blog, Law School for Visual Learners. So it's the end of 1L. What have I learned in 1L? Oh my God. <laughs> um, it has been a journey. And what I have learned has been a lot. Let me take you through my journey and I'll tell you what I learned. So first of all, the beginning of 1L was very confusing. As the French say, and I'm French, we say bouleverse, your whole world has been <laughs> turned upside down. And law school is not undergrad. So I repeat what my undergrad is. I studied um, international law for my program, which was international affairs and comparative politics. And we did sociology. So a lot of it is, you know, analysis and learning different kinds of laws and treaties and all of that. But I want to say that law school for me has opened my eyes to how much of a trade it is. There's very specific things you need to learn and you're basically becoming a teacher and a professional writer. So you have to write with precision, but you also have to explain abstract and advanced concepts in a simple way, primarily for your clients and the jury, right? So you're having to make an argument and you have to do so with extreme precision. Um, one of whom I think, one jurist I think that makes the best uh, arguments and analysis is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. If you've ever read any of her arguments, they are just with incredible precision. And she's not alone. There's so many um, jurists out there, regardless of political background who make incredible arguments and analysis and they're so beautiful they're almost poetic and of course I'm kind of geeking out on that but you have to be able to write with precision with imagination with clarity to break down something that is arguable and, and complex and theoretical and put it into practical terms for either laws or to make a case and to prevail so that's, in essence, what I have learned about the trade of being a lawyer, um, because it can be applied in so many ways, whether it's federal regulation like the FDA or FTC, or you're learning to make an argument or to write laws that are going to affect millions of people or maybe just an ordinance um, or to protect yourself in a contract. Uh, you, there's a variety of ways that you can use your law degree, but you have to write with precision. You have to analyze really well and to take something complex and make it simple. And so that's pretty much what you're learning in first year um, in legal analysis, as well as the other topics that you're going to be covering. So my first year was torts, criminal law and contracts and then legal analysis. And it was a lot. Obviously, as you know about me, I have a business. I have two small children doing it during a global pandemic. It was a lot to do and not in a way was nice because my kids were at home. I didn't have to drive them back and forth that's two hours a day that I do that. And then, you know, there's no social thing. So nobody's asking me to go out. So that cut any kind of conflict with, oh, I can't go, I'm studying. Um, so in a way it was positive, but in a way it was negative because you have to manage a lot at home with two small children under the age of 10 years old and be a parent and clean and cook and do all of those things, run a business, um, you know, it was positive in a sense that I was able to do a lot from home, but a negative in the sense that my bread and butter speak publicly speaking and working out trade shows and events, they were all canceled. So you're having to manage your finances, manage your business, manage your children, manage your home and all the things that go with the pandemic. Um, and while going to law school and managing your schedule. And on top of that, my husband was working from home. So he commandeered my office. So I had to get a laptop so I could practice somewhere else in the house and work. So it's a lot of reorganizing your schedule. Now I go to online correspondence school and there's a lot of like bad talk about that. And I'm here to tell you that you get out what you put in. So if you're going into any school, and now all schools are online, <laughs> brick and mortar, Ivy League, we're all online, we're all correspondents. And I think it also helped to get my school accredited in California because of this right now, which goes to show that you, you really get out what you put in. And as I've said before in a previous episode, in, term, in terms of like why I chose a correspondent school, there's no way I could go to a brick and mortar school. There's no way I could drive an hour 
plus each way to UC Irvine. I'm in San Diego and come back and spend 11 hours there and see my children grow up and run my business. If I were to do that, it's I'm simply not possible for me. So it is a lot of managing. And the second thing I want to say is, is that you're going to have professors who want to help you, but they're limited and they can't. Um, we don't have office hours in my school. You have um, message boards. I don't have time to wait for somebody three to four days to respond to a message board. So I did what I did. I hired a tutor and I paid a premium for that. But I, again, I got out what I put in. So for me, hiring a tutor changed everything. It got me on a track very quickly. And it was really important for me to get the answers, not Socratic questions to my questions to help me think through it. I really needed somebody to just break it down for me straightforward. So paying for a tutor was everything. And I got lucky. The first tutor I found was the best. I keep singing his praises, Scott Carone. I keep saying to him with all the referrals that I sent him, please make time for me. <laughs> Remember me. Um, because I've referred so many students from different schools in my school to him. And, it's, and he's very grateful. Um, but if you find a tutor and you don't necessarily vibe with them, find other tutors and test them out and get some help. If you have office hours, I did this in my undergrad for different classes with this abstract mathematics or, you know, international law. If you've got a tutor with office hours, take advantage of that. Get the help. Do not be prideful and egoistic and think, I don't need outside help. You get the help. You ask the questions. Even if you look like a fool, I've been in lecture, you know, and a professor said I was too smart. I was thinking too much. And, and it's not really fun to be berated. I've been in essay classes and the professor just saying this is crap and yelling at me and you have to humble yourself no matter where you are in your walk of life you have to humble yourself to learn because you have to unlearn to learn continually over and over again so it is a process of just throwing yourself into it and being open to unlearn to learn the other thing I can say is is that you have to take care of your emotional and mental health um, I I have experienced panic, I've experienced like overwhelm, um, and I'm a professional expert in emotional intelligence, and that's what I speak on. I've published books about it. So your human experience is what you're having, and you're, you're somebody who's learning something new, you're experiencing something different, you're going into the unknown, you're gonna feel overwhelmed, talk about it, get the help, deal with your feelings, deal with the stress, and take care of yourself. You know, it's not just about self-care, but it's about looking out for yourself and your group, your friends, and realizing you're not alone in your experience. So I've been very fortunate enough to connect with people who've followed the blog, Law School for Visual Learners, but also my classmates. We help each other get information about um, enrollment, about studying, about tips. And you don't necessarily have to give yourself and give all of yourself to where your boundaries are being crossed, but you can share and you can talk and you can be a friend and make friends. And that crew that you take with you in your years is going to be the crew you network with and get help with when you are a lawyer. So think about that. It's, it's also you're getting a professional uh, group of people that you can turn to and you won't be empty handed professionally when you graduate. So that's one thing that I've learned. Get some get help. Join a crew. Take care of your mental and emotional and physical health. Um, and don't be too proud to learn and be flexible. Remembering that you always get out what you put in. So the other thing I want to say that I've learned is don't believe the hype from your classmates. There will be the gunners in your class who always going to be right or they'd be bullying. I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen it. Um, bullies in my school, people who will tell you, oh, it's so hard. It's so imp impossible. Don't believe that. You can do it. There have been thousands and millions of people who get law degrees all over the world. You can do it. I don't care where you're from. If you have learning disabilities, if you're deaf, if you're blind, whatever. If you have serious anxiety, you can get your law degree. You can um, pass your classes. Now, with that being said, the most important thing I've learned is you have to learn your way. For me, it was a visual way. If you're going to learn thousands of rules of law, 
you're going to learn how to analyze and read contracts and read laws and explain them to people who don't know the law. You have to learn your own way. So you have to get to know yourself. You have to understand what's my best way of learning. Some might be audio books. Some might be drawing comic books. Some might be making visuals. Some might be acting it out. I've gone into my driveway on my cul-de-sac and wrote down like my analysis and stuff on the road. Learn your way. Find the way that makes it easier for you. You might be taught in different ways and you might not vibe with the professor. You not, might not vibe with their way of teaching you. But you have to take your own learning process in your own hands to facilitate all of the new things you're going to take in. And on top of that, because you're becoming a lawyer, you're going to be a teacher at the end of this. You have to be able to teach these things to other people. So find your way of expressing your understanding um, that works best for you. And you'll have fun with it and that it becomes a joyful experience, not just a painful one. The other thing I would have to say that I've learned is, is that you got to laugh at every experience. You got to make fun of it. You got to laugh, um, jokes, but not to the point to where it, you're just talking about how hard things are and how difficult it is and how it's not worth it because there are so many different kinds of lawyers out there, whether they're working for the government, whether they're working for the White House, whether they're working and don't even have a license and they're working for the FDA or for um, pharmaceuticals. There's so many different ways that you can be a lawyer today without having to be a private practice attorney. So with that being said, you got to find and explore all the professional options that you have available to you now. Don't wait, do it now. And I would say the final thing that I've learned in this process is getting a mentor, finding a mentor. I got really lucky. I watched a documentary and I found a retired Supreme Court justice and we just hit it off, like friend level hit it off. Just and and the thing is is that I don't ask him for advice all the time. It's just somebody who can give you a little bit perspective and it kind of turned things around for me because I remember when I got my grades, I called him and I'm like, this doesn't accurately reflect how I feel about myself. My grades don't reflect my concept of myself. Help me understand this. And he told me the story that he went to college, to law school, and he took a torts class and he didn't get the grade he wanted. He went to his professor and the professor was like, well, not everybody is meant to be a lawyer and just kind of brushed him off. And he ended up becoming a state representative and a Supreme Court justice. Um, and he's like, you know what, Leslie, like, you're going to have people who naysay to you. And he's right. I didn't become a lawyer. I became a judge. I became a Supreme Court justice. So you got to have somebody who's walked the line, who can give you perspective, who can encourage you, and who can also shoot you straight, and who's not going to sugarcoat things, and who's going to just look out for your best interests and point you in the right direction, and who can be honest with and have fun with, honestly. And that really helped me. I got really lucky. So don't be afraid to, to clerk, to ask for help, to interview people, to share your papers with people who have gone way before you and have done amazing things. Like put yourself out there. They're people just like you and they love hearing from students. And um, there are people who love helping other people find those people, connect with those people, build your network um, and build those relationships again. So you don't feel alone. You don't feel overwhelmed. You don't feel scared. You feel like you can do this day by day. You feel like you can do this. And so with that being said, Law School for Visual Learners so far has been a success. I'm very happy for it. This has been my hobby. If you followed me from other fields, professional fields, you know that I do other things. I have another show called Valuable Insight that I do with Daniel Beavers, my co-host. And I have written books. I've done other things. But Law School for Visual Learners is a labor of love. It's my hobby. If you buy the outlines, it funds the actual hosting. It, it to buy the supplies. It's really this hobby of mine to build a community and friendships and to show people, to make the point to all these people who write textbooks, who have schools, these deans, hey, we can make it fun. We can make it engaging. My little kids who are six and eight, 
they know the law, they can repeat it verbatim because I've made it easy, I've made it fun for them and practical, practical and applicable to their own life. And that's what the learning the law is all about. It's, it's about that. So I want to tell you, these are the things that I've learned over this past year. I'm continuing on, I have a four year program. It's not a three year. So you're gonna be stuck with me for four years total if you stay with me. I'm gonna do my best to put this content as much as I can when I get my office back from my husband. Um, and I hope you enjoy this. Tell me if you're finishing 1L or if you're in 1L, tell me your experience. I'd love to know in the comments what you've learned from me or what you've learned from your own processes and add any tips that you have for other students as well that you've gained from your, your passing every year of law school. Thank you for joining me on this blog post of Law School for Visual Learners. I'm Leslie Juvenicker. Learning the law can be fun and easy. Thanks for joining me to dispel that myth that law school is hard and for the elite. Take care.